from Odyssey USA. I'm Daniel and today we're in the garage doing some maintenance. The parts and tools that you'll need for this spark plug swap are the OEM replacement plugs. These are NGK laser iridiums. They do not recommend anti-seize for use with their plugs. Here's the part number. A 3 8 drive ratchet, some extensions, I'm using this universal joint in lieu of a one inch stubby extension because back by the firewall, it's a little tight. Um, the three inches is too long for uh, getting to the coil bolt. A five eight spark plug socket. If you can find it, your 10 millimeter socket. Flat tip screwdriver. Uh, I kind of made my own pick for using on the weather pack connectors. I'll show you that here in a minute. And an inch pound 3 8 drive torque wrench. The first step is to remove the engine cover by removing these two 10 millimeter bolts. They just snap onto these little balls. So for just a quick close-up of what I did to get the connectors released, put the screwdriver here, popped it up, and go to um, an auto parts store and you'll find a, a pick set. I kind of improvised and sacrificed a finite screwdriver, but uh, you'll see the curve there. And uh, nice sharp edge so I'll get up under there that's the clip there's a little plastic tab you're trying to get under it very gently lift up and pull back and you'll do that on the rest of them the next step is to remove the four coil bolts there's this one and then there's one here, one there, and one back here. Now that we've loosened all of the coil pack bolts, to get number two out, that's this coil right here, we're gonna need to disconnect this temperature sensor right here. See that white clip? We gotta get that one out. Okay, so to get coil two out, we've gotta disconnect this temperature probe right here. So we're gonna come at it from this direction with the pick, get up under there, and we're gonna push slightly left, just enough to get the job done. We don't wanna break that clip up under there. So you're gonna get up under it and push left, just a little bit. The next step is to remove the spark plugs themselves. Here's the four plugs that came out of it. One's over here, four's over here. As you can see, the deposits are unremarkable. They're all pretty even. One's not significantly richer or leaner than the other. Uh, the deposits you see are indicative of how I drive. I tend to drive very conservatively. Just, uh, I'm not in a hurry, and um, I try to get a little bit of gas mileage out of it since I'm commuting pretty far. So let's, uh, let's call these normal. And now let's look at the new plug. Here's the new one. Nice fresh electrode and ground strap. Here is 
the gap I'm going for, I don't know if you can read that, is 24 thousandths. They say anywhere between 24 and 25 is spec. I'm going to err on the side of narrow because I want longevity. The extra thousandths will not result in any additional power gains. So that's what I'm going to run. Um, I'm going to check all the plugs, make sure the gap is correct before I put them in, and obviously make sure I don't hit the ground strap on anything. Also be careful not to knock dirt down into the spark plug tubes. I do try to clean my engine compartment as best I can before I do any maintenance. That way, especially when you open up the engine, like the combustion chamber is currently opened up right now, you don't want any dust and debris falling down there and scoring your cylinder walls. Okay, so now we are putting new plugs in. I've checked all the gaps. When you are gapping them, the gapper, and I prefer the feeler gauge type, not those cheap ones that have a ramp, uh, it should slightly drag in between the center electrode and the ground strap, just a tiny little bit of resistance. So we're going to put the plug in gently. Do not use a ratchet to install them. You don't want to cross thread it and have leverage to where you can't tell if you're cross threading it. Just set it down in there. Used to you'd put spark plugs on the end of a rubber hose, but I don't know if that will work over this much distance down into the engine there. I feel like, yeah, it feels like it's grabbed. It's nice and smooth. I don't have any concern right now. So I should hit a nice stop here pretty soon. Yeah, it's squeaking. There you go. Squeaked like it did when we were breaking them loose. All right, so that one feels nice. And we'll go on and uh, we'll put the other ones in as well. Then the next step after that is breaking out the inch pound torque wrench. And um, I'll give you the setting for that and we'll torque them to spec. Okay, so I've got my torque wrench set. The specs are 129.6 inch pounds to 174. That translates to 10.8 foot pounds to 14.5 foot pounds. Uh, I've went ahead and set mine at 174 inch pounds. Uh, Aaron on the side of caution because there was a little bit of grabbiness right there at the top. Um, and I also want to fully compress the gasket seat that's on there. All right, last one's tight. Now everything just goes back together in reverse order. All right, now we are going to pop those back on in the back, set that down. All right, and reinstall the 10 millimeter bolts. And that's it. Uh, being a former aircraft maintenance technician and former uh, automotive machinist, um, I did try to go find the bolt torque spec for the coal on plug bolt. So uh, I couldn't find it on Jail Wrangler forms. I went to Fastenal's website. I measured the, the bolt's major diameter on the threaded area there, and it was six millimeters and use their chart there uh, for an 8.8 .8 grade bolt. Came up 70 inch pounds, so that's what I went with if you really want to know. Um, beyond that, you're good for another 60,000 miles of fun. So uh, with that, that's the end of the video. If you found it useful and the information was solid, uh, please uh, give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, leave those in the comment section.